Hey guys, we'll get started here in about two minutes. Hey everyone, and welcome back for our final installment of the Patch Management Webinar Series. My name is Matt Coker, and I've been here with you for the past three weeks, and with me as always is Dan Powers. Also joining us today, we're happy to introduce the very talented Frank Hansen, who is newer to the Champion team, been with us uh, within the year, I think. And uh, Frank is our lead developer on our eBridge technology, which is integrated into ServiceNow. And today uh, we're going to be Focusing on the inter, uh, integration of Big Fix and ServiceNow. Frank is going to show us um, all of this shortly, and as always at the end, we'll make sure to leave enough room uh, for questions that you all may have. And also, if uh, if anyone wants to stick around for a little while afterwards, I'm sure Frank and Dan might have some other cool things to show us as well. So we did want to start today off with a quick polling question. Uh, we really wanted to uh, know from you all if you've enjoyed how we've kind of broken this series into four smaller parts versus the traditional hour-long webinar and you know if you found this useful and beneficial we hope you did so uh, let me launch the polling question here it's really just you know have you enjoyed this multi-part series or do you prefer the traditional just one hour long webinar we appreciate you taking the time to just give us a little feedback on this and it'll help us know how we want to proceed in the future with these too so we're looking at possibly making this if time willing a weekly or even a bi-weekly thing if we have enough interest so excellent excellent looks like everyone prefers the uh the multiple series so well thank you again for your participation so all right so just to recap guys uh you know our, from our previous weeks in week one we gave a really high level overview of big fix uh we talked about the different modules inside of it and, and the importance of the relays in your environment and then we also took action on a few fixlets in our test environment and we showed all this live week two we got a little deeper uh dan showed us how to build a couple different baselines and we discussed building our target groups whether they were uh, automatic or manual and then we also uh you know we we actually repurposed our compliance reports from that week one and we ran it again in week two to show you how detailed and uh, uh items that we can get out of it last week we focused on on change management and if, if you remember dan uh discussed how to incorporate your patching groups into a patching cycle and we kind of drove this via an excel file sheet right which it works in most environments but what we're really looking to try to do is that you know sh show you this in a true cmdb something like service now or what frank has developed for ebridge and that's exactly what frank is going to show us today so uh without further ado frank i'm going to turn it over to you sir and and let you get into it. Okay, um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound great. Hey, hello everyone. Um, so thanks for the intro, Matt. And what I wanna cover in today's session is I'm gonna go through a big fix in ServiceNow and what things make sense to integrate, um, what things you know are, are important 
from both an individual standpoint in Big Fix and an individual standpoint in ServiceNow, how you can utilize Big Fix to either augment discovery or use instead of discovery. And then go into the service automation side of patching and how we we created a solution where we call the eBridge that, that does just that. It pulls data and provides a bi-directional feed to and from ServiceNow and Big Fix. And lastly, we'll go through a live demo and kind of walk you through the moving parts. So Big Fix and ServiceNow say what? Is that, you know, really every company that we've dealt with that has both of the products looks to do some type of integration with that. What we've done is we did, you know, being the big fix SMEs, we thought of the things that make sense to bring across. And then it just kind of cascaded from there. And as you can see in the navigation bar there, you know, we bring all the important elements of big fix into service now and provide the capability to perform service catalog service requests against certain things. So if you want to patch from within ServiceNow, if you want to modify computer settings, if you want to execute tasks. Um, we have all the data available. We've mined that data in a way that we can then reuse properties and create relationships from Big Fix into other elements within ServiceNow. <clears throat> so inventory with a purpose. In our mind, Big Fix can be used to perform discovery in almost the same way that ServiceNow discovery works today. Um, ServiceNow's discovery could be a combination of scripts that go out and perform Nmap scans or perform um, ping sweeps. Um, you can have any scripting capability go off and do those type of um, data gathering. You know, we, we have a component that does the same thing, but then we decided to tie in Big Fix Stress API to pull computer core properties and computer settings. And by pulling this data in, we then a byproduct of this gives us the relationships that tie in whether a computer is relative or the relevance of a computer would map to a specific group or to a baseline. And we don't have to worry about any of that because we utilize Big Fix on the back end and the inventory components in ServiceNow, we're only using them to perform an action. And again, we can also report on this data and from there we can take action and perform um, some functions that I'm gonna go through here in a minute. So then that brings us into patching with a purpose. So patching in ServiceNow can be handled in a couple of different ways when instrumenting this with Big Fix. Um, we've done it in both the two ways that I can think of. The first way is with a service catalog. And a service catalog in ServiceNow has a, a record producer and a series of things that you can have presented to the user and then perform an action against that set of um, questions that you ask. So in our case, we've, we've created four service catalog um, request items, one for baselines, one for individual pass or patches and tasks. And then if you wanna update a computer setting and those service catalog requests, what's nice is we have full auditing capability and we can tie those into a workflow to look for approval processes, notifications, and things of that nature. So the next thing is, is this kind of falls in line to what Dan had presented and the, the way that he instrumented patching and the maintenance window type capability. We mimic that in ServiceNow by creating a service request that has a patch group. And then from that patch group, you know, I've, I've included things like I want to run this against a big fix group or I want to, um, you know, include a baseline. Um, also, in Dan's example, he had the, the whole notion of patch day. So we included in our service request the notion of patch day. And then patch time, start time and end time. And then lastly, we have included in our example a reboot yes or no. Now this can obviously be automated back on the baseline um, or you know with an additional component. Um, we just included it in here just as a you know as a proof of concept to show you any attribute that is exposed in the the XML component of the REST API for a baseline can be added in a service request, and you can go and perform an action against that. 
So, you know, it's it's nice to see it in a slide deck, but I always prefer to show the real thing. And I'm going to switch real quick out of the PowerPoint. And I'm going to have here, I have side by side a instance of Big Fix, and I have our instance of ServiceNow. And what you can see on the screen here is, you know, we've we've created a bridge component that brings in elements of Big Fix. And, you know, we have a, a series of menu op applications tied into our core product, which this is a scoped app as far as ServiceNow is concerned. So we, we, we keep the app separated from the, the you know, the regular CMDB and, and the other ServiceNow specific things. And by doing that, we can then tie in from our extended tables into ServiceNow. <clears throat> so the first part of this really is the discovery side of things. And when we went down the path of integrating ServiceNow and BigFix together, you know, the REST API is the, the cleanest way to do it, but sometimes not always the fastest way. So we've, we've had to split this up into two pieces. The first piece is, you know, anything that's heavy lifting as far as pulling big chunks of data, we're utilizing the mid server in ServiceNow and doing JDBC requests to pull large chunks of data. Um, and those are things that are non-actionable type, you know, data sets where we want to pull, you know, like all of the actions that may have ran, or maybe we want to pull the baseline data because baseline data, while it doesn't seem like a, a big deal, um, there's many com or many abstract components tied to baselines. Um, as you can see here, I have baselines that are, you know, have associations with properties, and then the properties are associated with components, and then there's values tied to it. So there's a lot of moving parts to that. So we elected to have some of these things go through JDBC and do SQL queries to pull of it, and some of them to go through REST requests. So I'm going to walk you through a few of those things now. Um, the first piece is really just to gather the inventory component of Big Fix, and I have a, a Big Fix computer section here. And as you'll notice, anything related to like Big Fix properties, I can pull that data directly, and it's all you know grouped by the host. Anything related to computer settings, same kind of thing. I can pull all of that data, and then as I drill into the individual computer. I'm now in the actual CMDB within ServiceNow, but I have associated actionable tasks that I can go and perform against the big fix endpoint if it is an endpoint. Um, you'll notice up here I have a few action buttons if I want to go get updated computer settings or if I want to go grab computer data. Um, also down here you'll notice I have any of the computer setting data in a related list, the core properties, where this computer might be tied to a baseline. And then if there's incidents associated with it, those will also show up as well. So that discovery piece was the first part of what we needed to build and gather. And we did a, I feel like we did a really good job in pulling the elements from Big Fix and refactoring it so that it's a pretty fast and seamless process, all automated, all through REST and JDBC. And it all happens in a scheduled task um, you know, that once you deploy the application and start, you don't have to have to worry about it. So the next piece of it then was, okay, now we want to do some, some automation. And let's say we want to update a computer setting, or we want to perform, you know, create a baseline dynamically, or we want to push a baseline. All those things were kind of like on the forefront of our mind of saying, these are the things that we have to do today um, to integrate Big Fix and ServiceNow. And I'll jump back to the computer section for just a second, just to kind of give you an idea of something. So as we look at Dan's example with his patch group, so if we were to, to filter on patch group, you'll notice I followed in line with his group A, B, C, and D. And let's say we're, we're in a situation where we want to modify this particular patch group for this particular server. Um, now, you know, if you're a big fix admin and you have the console available, sure, you can go in, right click, edit computer settings. If you're not a big fix admin, but you still need to have this pushed into a specific patch group, you can come into our service requests and up down under the update computer settings. And I can come in here and I can say, find me a host. So let's say I want to apply it to my database box. And let's say I want to update Dan's patch group. And let's say I want to change it from group C to group A, I can kick that off. And what you'll see happen over in the big fix side of things 
is it'll automatically invoke an action. And you'll notice now it just kicked off this action. So it's all happening through the REST API. And if I go down through here, I can also see that it's, you know, my, my request was to change that to group A. So that'll run, you know, just in normal big fix fashion and will, you know, happens behind the scenes again. And now we have this whole track record of what's going on from a, a, a service request perspective. So that's one nicety, you know, being able to perform those kind of actions. But more importantly, what happens in, in like lifecycle and, and full scale patching is that you need to go through some kind of approval process. Now, what we've done for that is <coughs> same thing in a service catalog. But now in our baseline request, we provide the user with the ability to select a group, select a patch group. They can pick any set of, of fixlets that were pulled in. Now, I might, I'd like to also mention that we tie in sites and fixlets based off of the category field in Big Fix. And we have a specific value that we set in there because we don't want to pull in everything. That gave us a nice way to filter things and, and provide a more a cleaner set of data going into ServiceNow. Um, I also included his patch day and then patch date and time. And then I included the reboot on here. And then, you know, if we want to add it to a big fix baseline, we have to include that. Now, all of this behind the scenes goes through a really simple workflow. And as you can see on my screen, um, I have a, a simple workflow to, re, to perform this baseline request. And it goes through an approval process. Um, I do a little bit of logging. I like to keep, you know, a nice audit trail of things. And then once I pass the approval process, <coughs> I run our script include that will perform the baseline with pass or with our, you know, variables passed to the individual include script. And then based on the response, it will um, come back and do a uh, update the status and then log the message. If it hey, happens, Frank, can fail, I interrupt you for one second? Sure. Okay, so so for the folks that have been on for, for the patch one, two, and three, right, part of that is we were slowly building up this automation, right? Hey, how do we take action? We obviously see Frank can do that via service now. That's awesome. Um, and then we build this notion of the patch group setting times. And the whole point was to make it an automation standpoint. Now, the screen Frank has up here, you know, he's showing you how to go in and override stuff. The other thing to note, because this data gets fed via the REST API into ServiceNow from Big Fix, is on that Patch Tuesday, when new patches, I'm gonna pick Microsoft because everybody gets Patch Tuesday. As those patches come out, when Frank comes into the ServiceNow side, right, we looked at how do people normally, you know, go to CAB and get patch approvals if you, for change management. And it was, okay, here's the set of devices. So Frank can pick a group of devices, and underneath there where all those patches are, ServiceNow, because it pulled the data from Big Fix, knows what patches are applicable to that set group. So the other thing of saving time for you is simply creating, as Frank was demonstrating, I just don't know if everybody got the point, is I could come in here in ServiceNow and create that service request that says, hey, I'm the patch guy, here's the set of machines I'm trying to patch this weekend, here's the relevant patches. This does it for you automatically with two clicks. Um, and then Frank's workflow, and, and that's what he's showing you is, hey, once that request goes through, it will automatically go back, kick off the baseline. I think that's what Frank's gonna show you next. But for those of you that are looking at this and saying, hey, where's the other value here? Um, that is kind of the concept, um, just from patching scenario, is we can make that service request, what patches, what systems, what are relevant, into your service request to get approval. And once that's approved, everything's automated at this point. Yep, Sorry, that's Frank, great, I'm done. Nope, nope, that's a great segue. Thanks, Dan. So, you know, in, in our service request side of things, you know, again, these are what's called record producers. And in the ServiceNow side, if you're doing anything with Service Catalog, you're probably already familiar with what a record producer is. And basically you, you can construct this service catalog entry to look and feel any way you want it. You know, we just tried to model this similar to like what Dan was presenting in the previous examples with the exception of I included a set of groups in here. And I wanna be able to, you know, pull out all the groups that I fed directly from um, Big Fix and be able to select and say, hey, I wanna run this against all my Windows servers. And I wanna change patch group to this 
and let's say I want to add these fixlets to my baseline. I got to give it a baseline name. Let me give it an all windows name, important. I have to pick a patch day. And then from the patch day, I want to pick the date and time. And you know, just say, let this guy go there. Um, and then reboot yes or no. And then click submit. So now what happens here in the background for this particular one is that we have a our workflow tied into it and there's an approval process. So one of the things that we did was we said, okay, we need a big fix group. So we created a big fix group called big fix operators. And in that big fix operators group, we then assigned a given user to it. And now what I'm going to show you is that user now, it's there's a request approval waiting in that user's queue. So I'm going to go up here into service. Now I'm going to impersonate a user. So I'm going to impersonate my Frank Hansen user. And I'm going to look down to my approvals. And then I'll sort by create date. And I have a few requests in here that I need to approve. And this was to do my all windows task. And now I can go, and again, my workflow is really simple, right? It just says, hey, this guy has to approve it. It doesn't have to do anything else, which you can make that as complex based on your policy of your organization or whatever. And then I got it, I'm gonna say approve now. And now the approval process finishes the workflow and it, he's doing a, uh, a rest request at the moment. And what will end up happening here is now the approved request, and this is a, an add message that's easily added into um, you know, ServiceNow. And now if I switch back, my request from that user now will kick off a, a baseline, it will perform an action, and then we'll notice here we have an important action. And now the what will end up happening here in a moment is now we can go back in and look through the reporting side of things. And we're able to track end to end our list of requests. So I've included a widget here that shows the, the sample requests. So like our baseline requests. And as it goes through the process and it gets the return status data, we'll start to see any requests that occurred. We're able to track what that request was, you know, what the action response was, and then as the baseline will run through its exercise and, and, and components are installed or not installed, action status data is then also retrieved. So the other piece of this is if a component fails and one of the fixlets doesn't run for whatever reason, we have the full set of action data being pulled in. And this, if you look, if I come into my navigation, and I pull up my actions, um, I can see you know, what, what has occurred, oops, sorry, wrong one. I, I now get a track record of what's occurred in the environment. And, you know, just from an action standpoint, there's a limited set of data that you get, but we're pulling back everything, you know, that's valuable, at least from an action side of things. And one of the workflows that we built was if the action status goes into a failed, it will automatically create an incident. And the incident then is assigned to the, the CI or, or the configuration items assignment group, and then the end user would receive that incident in their queue. And what we're trying to show you here, right, is for most people, whether you use ServiceNow or not, right, your standard practice of, again, having to generate the group of machines, generate which patches, be able to submit that into your change management process, whatever that happens to be, getting that approval, and then going back into your tool set and actually running the actions and then manually sitting there watching everything happen and have to record it into your incident problem system. Um, everything happening here that Frank is showing you is automated, right? Now he's bopping around screens to show this point, but if you even look on the right side of Frank's screen, you'll notice that the big fix baseline got created and kicked off, right? Frank didn't, didn't, touch the big fix screen at all, but I noticed that action pop in because ServiceNow directed it. So the whole point here is to save, you know, is to automate the mundane, 
right, is to alleviate time. What we notice in a large environment to do some of this could have taken your patch operator a few hours every week just to gather the data, submit the ticket, go through the cab meeting and all of this. Frank showed you all the overrides, but again, those patch groups and windows, as that data assets are added and you put that information in there, you're, we're leveraging the CMDB as the source of truth. So he could simply target that baseline to the whole set of systems. And just like we showed you last week, if this is not your patch group, even the, or your week per se, even though that baseline kicked off, your machines won't get patched until you're in your time window, right? So this is the savings that we're trying to show from an automation standpoint and from an auditing standpoint inside of the uh, your ticketing system. Yep. So the other the other byproduct of this is as we discover big fix data, you know, if if your environment's policy is that everything has to have a big fix agent on it. You know, one of the things we know just by nature of when we populate our, our portion of the CMDB is we know if a computer has or do, has not had the agent installed. And one of the things you can do, you know, th this can either be a UI policy button or it can be a service catalog. I added it as a, a policy button to say, hey, like if I look, I know in my lab any computer that is has STC on it. Oh, try that again. I know any one of these computers has the agent on it. So if I was to go into it, you know, I see I can go and pull the settings or I can pull the patch data. But let's say I have a computer that didn't have the agent installed on it. I now get a button and I can perform a big fix install on the agent. Now, obviously the back end of this has to work with a relay and you have to have installed a fixlet prior to this, you know, but the, the, the rest call still calls a fixlet with the fixlet ID and performs the action. Hey, so Frank, there's all so, kinds of really cool integration you can do. So this is a good question. So in your example, how did you know the agent was there versus not? What other data were you pulling from? You know, because obviously we're talking about big fix integration. You obviously have computers that don't have a big fix agent. So how did you know that? Yeah, so what I ended up doing is as I discover big fix computers, I flip a switch on it and you'll see this big fix enabled switch. Just like you know, out of the box CMDB within ServiceNow, they have an is virtual switch, right? We added an is big fix enabled. And if you look at computers that have big fix enabled, you'll notice over here to the right, as I discover those devices, I set that switch on the CMDB. And then it's really easy for me then to have a UI policy that says, if true, then show the, or do not show the button, if false, show the button. And this is going to be an easy softball question to you, because this is what we get asked all the time. Sometimes, especially in a large environment, they come back and say, hey, did you get the big fix agent installed everywhere? And a lot of times our answer is we don't know. Can you show me a report or something that shows in your environment what has and does not have it? Because you're pulling data from Active Directory and live scans. Yep, absolutely. So there's one of two ways. So I have a, a report that shows it on my main dashboard, but an, a really quick way is I can come in here and just say, hey, show me who has it installed and who doesn't. So now I see here's the computers that have it installed. So if I click on it, if I click on it. You're having mouse problems. There you go. <laughs> And the reason I bring this up, because the core eBridge technology that Frank did is leveraging the discovery data of ServiceNow, and also his eBridge does a discovery, but also pulls all the metrics from Active Directory. Um, this was great, and, and my softball question to him was a softball question, but it's true, is, hey, how do I know the agents installed? So while we're focusing on big fix here, other girders or other integrations we have, let's say from Carbon Black or a mobile device scenario, we can do the same thing. Hey, is AirWatch <coughs> deployed on all my mobile devices? Um, leveraging the source of truth inside of your CMDB is going to help us figure that data out. Yep, and what's just to kind of add on to what Dan was saying is, you know, we, we discover all of the big fix specific data, you know, the computer settings and properties and, and maybe additional custom property data that we might be interested in. But in addition to that, we also go out and we, we say, hey, we know about Active Directory, right? And we know about vCenter. Let's go pull the data that we can get from there. And we get a rich set of data from each one of those components. And then that we use together with our big fix data to make decisions that are more intelligent. 
that's cool. Hey, Frank, can you bring up the dashboard again that you had? Because to me, just an overall view was really cool, right? So this alone, right? And I know if you scroll down, for example, we're going to see that one example of data from other sources, whether it's a scan, Active Directory, whatever, and you're comparing it in this case with big fix data. Right? I thought you had it in this one down where you had a report that showed you, hey, out of all my devices, which ones have the endpoint installed, which ones don't. Yeah, I just, I just showed that report. Oh, sorry. I, I, I took it off the dashboard. <laughs> no problem. But but again, I know we're coming up at an end of time, and there was a lot more things Frank could show you here. But again, going back to that idea of the whole patching scenario we brought out, um, when we talk to big enterprises, is the patch folks aren't necessarily the folks that know what every server, what every application is doing. So our point was, well, this should be in a source of truth. Last week, I showed you that source of truth being an Excel file. It's workable, but obviously prone to a lot of errors. For those folks that have a CMDB, as you know, application owners bring on new servers, they should be filling out the information of what is this server, what is this patch group, what is this patch window, am I allowed to reboot this or not? As they onboard those systems, what Frank was trying to show you as the patching guy, he doesn't have to worry about their patch group. He doesn't have to worry about what their patch window is. He figures out the relevant patches because he has the data in service now, submits the request, gets his approval or not, um, and then initiates the patch workflow, and that data and incident reporting is happening all automatically. So, I, and again, I know we uh, we were up to 2.30. Do, do people have questions at this point? Everybody's quiet today. Hey, Dan, we got one here uh, from Fernando Martinez. He was saying, are you able to report SLA compliance, for example, for security patches? So, and again, Frank should probably answer this better than I, but yes, you can. Right. So part of that in every organization, right, is what is your SLAs? So you might obviously, you know, your environment may be, hey, critical patches have to be hit to these set of servers in 30 days, whatever that is. That information, of course, can be added into service now as your SLA. And because we're pulling those groups in, right, because let's also take into consideration, you know, your your critical servers may have a slightly different SLA than your dev environment your, your or, or other servers, right? So part of that is in Big Fix anyway, we would say, hey, create an automatic group that show me your SQL servers, which obviously we can do very easy, or what your, you know, an automatic group of different types of servers. We can then add your SLA information into ServiceNow. And as Frank's pointing out, hey, I have the data. I can slice, dice, create reports very, very quickly. Um, on that note, and I'll just bring this up, Frank didn't demo it today, but for folks that have like the compliancy module, right, inside of Big Fix, um, great module. Um, sometimes, it, you know, the work there is really in setting it up. What we were looking at doing with eBridge and into ServiceNow was, hey, just enable those external sites. And then we can have drop down lists based on your devices. And we can show you from a compliancy module standpoint, not just patches, we can obviously show you that, right? But we can then also show you what about all the configuration items, right? Are we mapped up to DISA STIG? Are we mapped up to the CISA, right? Are, is the passwords uh, uh, compliancy set? Are the you know screensavers turned on on all your desktops type things? So yes, it's a very simple, uh, report data that we could add into here um, and some of the default reports that we are adding. Frank just didn't demo it today. Yep, I mean, the, the big point with that is that we have the, the data and by, by having the data now, we've added intelligence around what to do with the data in more than just, you know, the, the big fix nomenclature, right? Because some of this information is, is very useful to other parts of your organization. You know, some people want to know, well, who patched something when? Right, and we can pass that big fix data over to the AD folks that are in ServiceNow, and we we can pass AD data over. So I mean, we have the capability of pulling, you know, any of the the patch related information. So to show prior to big fix being put in your environment, you know, a great report is to say what has been what has been patched and is not relevant to remediation from big fix. 
So we have all of those, you know, those data elements. And by, you know, bringing that together and creating a, a correlation between that data, you know, we were able to make more, more informed choices on what to do next. Yeah, and, and to keep going with that as well, again, this was to focus on the big fix side. But part of that, for example, and Frank could probably show you on your big fix screen, pick a computer. And if Frank picks his, it's probably going to say as a user, Frank Hansen, right? Great. Big fix knows that as a core property value. However, it doesn't know who his manager is, what group he is in AD. Because Frank is also pulling that AD data, we can stitch that together. And that's what Frank means about when the data comes across eBridge, all the other data sources we're using, Frank kind of ties them together. So at a, another customer, for example, that had a mobile solution, you could key in for an example, and I'll just pick on Frank, Frank Hansen, and it's going to show us, hey, here's what we have. Here's his information out of AD. By the <coughs> way, here's his software usage analysis that we got out of Big Fix. And by the way, here's his mobile phone out of your MDM solution, right? So how we can pivot and report on the data in the CMDB is greatly enhanced by that correlation. And an important point here, too, is this data that we're bringing in from AD is outside of ServiceNow's discovery model. So this is completely separate from ServiceNow. It's, you don't need to purchase discovery in order to pull this data. Our, our bridge pulls it, you know, in the same fashion. And we're trying to then take the, this, you know, a step one further and say that, you know, if we bring this Frank's user information over, we also want to say what computers are he, is he tied to? And then by nature of that, if he owns, a, if an asset is his, what software has been deployed on his given computer? And again, this is all outside of Big Fix. And then you throw in the Big Fix mix here with capabilities of seeing, you know, what maintenance window am I in? So if I want to deploy an updated piece of software to that computer, I can utilize the two components together and say, hey, I want to install Google Chrome to Frank's computer. I now know with Frank's computer what maintenance window he's in. I know if it's if I'm able to deploy that software to him and then, you know, quickly I can make informed decisions without having to, you know, really drill into a, another council. So, you know, again, if you're the big fix admin and your responsibility day to day is to write fixlets, you know, you know, this is only going to help you from a service request standpoint. But if you need to instrument the functionality in big fix and you want to keep it audited in a service request or you know, an ITOM system, this method is is excellent for doing that. Well, and a great example of that, Frank, was even the self-service portal where you can have software packages, again, whether it's Big Fix, SCCM or whatever, that you published and a user can go in there and say, oh, look, I need Visio installed because you also have the AD data and automatic, that would go through an approval process like to your manager, hey, do you want to incur this expense and then deploy this and then do the callback into your, uh, in this case, big fix. Um, and another point I wanted to make, as Frank just said it, is you do not need to own orchestration and service now to do this. Uh, the big fix girder and actually every girder integration we make through eBridge is bi-directional. So again, to Frank's point, you don't need to have service now orchestration to do orchestration. And the same idea with event management. You do not need to own the event management piece. We bring that data in over, over the eBridge side. Yeah, and one one other point I'd like to bring up too is, you know, when you do these type of integrations, you know, a lot of it comes into the consistency and how you develop the solution. And then how do you set it up to ensure that it's successfully communicating that? So the other piece that we built into each of these girders is this whole notion of our configuration section. It's a really simple. There's just a few things that have to change in every environment. Um, most of these values here are the same, but you need to maybe have who's it assigned to or what's your um, big fix you know, server name. And by those couple of changes there, you're, you're fully instrumented. And then the back end, there's a test process that we have to ensure that you know, the REST communication and the database communication are working seamlessly. Sweet. So I think we got into probably a little more about eBridge here at the end, but <laughs> it was all good. So uh, again, if there's any more questions people have out there, please let us know. As I had said, some of those other fixlets that we created, I know James and a couple of people asked for them. We are going to supply them, zip them up with a little Word document about you know what these were used for um, and send it off to folks. 
So, Matt, do we have anything else? That should wrap us up for the evening, guys. Thank you. Um, like you said, Dan, it, it, you know, if anybody wants to catch up on these at all, you can definitely catch them on demand on either, you know, championsg.com or else on our YouTube channel. All righty. Well, thank you, everybody, for your attendance. Uh, again, I enjoy doing these shorter 30 minutes ones. Um, hopefully, I think everybody, I think it was 100% I saw said they like the shorter ones. Um, so I do like them that way. We are going to try to keep doing these, as Matt had said, um, based on your feedback there, either weekly or biweekly. And we'll have dis different discussions, but we'll try to keep on the same date and scenario um, so that everybody knows what it is. And as always, we appreciate your time and your uh, your patience for listening to us. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you.